Hey there, it's Sherry. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, first of all, I happened to look at my YouTube page yesterday and I realized that in probably 98% of my videos that I've posted, I look like I'm drunk. My freeze frame face is not working out very well. So anyways, um, try not to let that dissuade you from watching my videos any further. So anyhow, um, it's been a great week. I talked in my last video about um, hair loss and I've been going through it. I'm still going through it. I anticipate that I'll probably be going through it for the next few months. Um, hopefully it'll slow down at some point. But um, at this point, I'm just continuing to take my extra dose of vitamins, eating lots of protein, and um, I decided to get my hair cut. So you can see it's a lot shorter now than it was, um, but it's probably good. I mean, I live in um, a town where it gets to be anywhere from 103 to 107 or 8 during the summertime, so we're definitely in that zone right now. I mean, we're getting into the um, low triple digits, so I mean, it hasn't been horrible. But anyhow, um, so there was a viewer question um, left in the comments a couple of days ago about what you do if your doctor wants a six month monitored diet and weight loss before your surgery is approved. And the insurance companies are usually ones that request that. Um, my insurance company did not request it, so it wasn't something that I had to do. Um, but I do know people that did have to do it. And I think what the doctor's expectation with that is, is to show that you have the commitment level and the ability to follow a diet plan and exercise and that you're willing to make the lifestyle changes yourself and put the work in in order to get the surgery so that that way they know that you have the ability to do those things after you have the surgery because it's a really huge cost for the insurance company so if they're going to approve it they want to make sure that you're committed to the lifestyle change that you're going to have to be committed to after surgery and so if you don't lose all of the weight they may have you do it longer um, but in the cases that I know of they allowed the patients to go ahead and um, have the surgery even though they didn't make their weight loss goal because they were close and they had lost weight and it was consistent and the effort was there so um, hopefully that answers your question I know it's scary I know this whole process is really scary and I think before you have the surgery my biggest fear I know was that it wasn't going to happen. I just knew something was going to happen that was going to stop me from getting the surgery because I, I was so afraid of that happening. And since I've had the surgery, um, my fears always change. You know, I'm losing the weight. I'm afraid I'm going to gain it back at some point. So I think there's always going to be that level of fear involved. Um, but as you go on through the different phases, I think that... Um, you move past those fears and you deal with them in a healthy way and not with food. So I think that those are all really big successes. Um, so that's pretty much all I wanted to touch on today um, in this video. I'm going to do another video right now, but it's talking about the progress and updates with my blood clot that I developed um, after surgery um, in my arm. So if you're interested in hearing about that, then tune in to the next video. And if you want to keep up with the videos that I'm doing, then just hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel and, um, everything will come right to you. So anyhow, I hope everyone is having great success. I would love feedback, positive or negative. If there's something I do in the videos that just drives you crazy, then let me know. So anyhow, have a great day and good luck to everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.